Hi guys, Willsy here from Willsy360. Thanks for joining me in the third part of my video series about how to develop a 360 degree photo. What we'll cover in this video is some of the anomalies that can occur when you develop a 360 degree photo in ice. Then I'll take you through several methods of how you can improve or eradicate these anomalies using Photoshop. Let's dive right in. Now that we've completed exporting your 360 composite, I'd like to take this opportunity to show you some of the anomalies with the stitch process of ice. And these anomalies will need to be fixed in Photoshop. To do this, I'd like to also introduce you to a really simple and free application that I use to view 360 photos. It's called Rico Theta. Now, Rico Theta is a free download. You can get it off their website. It's actually designed for their Theta 360 camera. However, it works perfectly fine for all sorts of 360 imagery. So you'll see here on the left, I've got the 360 finals folder open. And on the right, I've got Rico Theta open. Rico Theta is a very basic application. There's not a lot to it. It's basically a drag and drop environment. You drag the photos in, and then you've got a couple of simple settings down below to navigate the 360 photo. We'll drag the JPEG over into Rico Theta. This will load. Just put it to full screen. Once your image is loaded into Rico, you'll start to see it appear and you'll be able to navigate just like normal, just dragging your mouse cursor around. As you can see, this looks a little abnormal. The horizon line is extremely skewed and is clearly warped up into the top left and right corner. The reason for this is because of the nature of the way Mavic Airs take their 360. Unfortunately, they are not 100% 360. They cannot take photos directly above themselves due to restrictions with the gimbal movement. And as a result of this, the 360 degree photo cannot stitch the top correctly. So this is what you end up with if you look at a 360 composite straight out of ice without any post-production. That said, we've got a few options to get rid of the sky looking like this. It won't be perfect, but it'll be tidy enough. Now let's move into Photoshop and open up the image that we just exported from ICE. So first and foremost, before you do any further post-production, I'd suggest you fix up any anomalies such as this little black spot here in the sky. There's likely a lot more anomalies in this image that you can't really see from this vantage point. And I'd advise you clean up as many as you can before moving forward and editing any further. So what we're going to do is grab the lasso tool and we're just going to draw a lasso around this area. And then you're going to right click in the lasso and click fill. Now we want to ensure that content aware is selected here because we want Photoshop to analyze the surrounding clouds and fill in the area with similar looking content. We'll click OK. Now the result may not always be perfect. And if not, I suggest you undo the edit and re-lasso it a different way and try again. You may need to do it several times before the content aware fills it in nicely. I can live with that for now. But just a reminder to make sure you repair as many of the anomalies as you can at this phase. You want to get as much of that out of the actual image as possible and clean it up as best you can. For now, I'm happy with the result in the top right corner, so let's move on. The first thing we're going to do to optimize the sky and fill up the full 360 sphere is we're going to duplicate this layer here, the background layer. So make a copy of that. And then we're going to delete the background layer. The next thing we're going to do is go up to Image and then drop down to Canvas Size. We want to select Pixels first. We also want to select the anchor point at the base of the image, the bottom center. The height figure that you see here is the leading cause for why the sky was looking pinched at the top of the 360 image I showed you earlier. In order to correct this, we need to ensure that the height is half the width of the 360 degree photo. To fix this, we're going to select the width and copy this figure. Now bring up your calculator, and we're going to paste that number in there and divide it by 2. We're then going to copy the division of 2, and we're going to paste that into the height box of the canvas size. This thing gives us the correct aspect ratio for the 360 degree photo, and we'll click OK. You'll now have a transparent area at the top of the image. We then want to select the rectangular marquee tool. And we want to select the entire sky 
with roughly 10% of the horizon line selected as well. So we're going to start just below the mountain line, drag right to the left, and we're going to let go with it just above the edge of the image. Now we want to stretch this part of the image, so we'll go up to Edit, and then we'll go to Free Transform, or otherwise Control T. This will give us some boxes to stretch and conform the selection we've just made. Now we want to select the center box up on the top, and just drag this about 11 inches. Use your own preference here, but in my particular case, I want about 11 inches because if I go too far, the rock looks a little stretched. The objective here is to try and just naturally stretch the sky and emphasize the mountain ranges a little bit. I'm aware that the rock becomes a casualty of the stretch, but we can fix that later with the liquify tool. We'll leave it about there, and we'll hit the Enter key. We'll deselect the selection, or Control D. And we're going to repeat the same step again, but this time we're going to do a higher part of the sky, and I'm going to do it just above the rock line here. So we're going to start the selection from the right, drag across to the left, let go just off the edge of the image, and repeat the same steps. Control T, drag the central part up, and I'm going to stretch it to about 8 or 9 inches. And again, use your preference here. In my case, this looks a little bit over skewed, but I'm doing this purely for the purpose of the video. The aim here is to fill as much of the empty canvas as we can with the natural sky. We're going to fill the upper part of the image with either one of two things. One, a logo like this to promote your 360 photos. Or two, a linear gradient color selected from one of the most prominent colors within the sky. If you prefer a more thorough and accurate method of repairing your sky, I should also note that later on in this video I cover a more advanced method to repair the sky using content aware and clone tools. You might want to check out this method at 12 minutes and 45 seconds into the video. Going back to the initial two quick methods of repairing the sky, we'll start with the gradient. Now I recommend we start a new layer for this, so I've got an empty layer on top and our background image at the bottom. We'll select our top layer. We now want to select our gradient tool and we want to ensure it's set to foreground to transparent mode. We also want to ensure it's set to linear. Now what you want to do is select a part of the sky that is the most prominent color. So in this case we've got a mixture of grays, blues, whites. Um, I'm going to go with color in between light gray and dark gray. We're going to start with this. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key to open the sampler. We're going to select that and let go of the Alt key. And now what we're going to do is we're going to drag our gradient down from the edge of the current image. So just about here. We're going to drag down about two inches and you can hold the shift key to ensure it snaps to straight. We're going to leave it about there to give us a nice fade. Now as you can see it doesn't look perfect but when you actually view this in 360 sphere the drawbacks are negligible. I suggest you have a play around with sampling various colors because some colors may blend with the sky better than others. In any case, if you've got a completely clear day and a blue sky, that's gonna be pretty simple. You just wanna select the most prominent blue in the sky. I'd suggest what you do is make a gradient, save it to a JPEG, open it in Rico Theta, preview it and see if that looks all right, and then adjust from there. Now we're gonna save this image. I'm gonna open up in Rico Theta to show you what it looks like. I prefer to save it as a JPEG because they're a smaller file and Rico Theta is better optimized with them. Here you can see the 360 photo with the optimized sky that we've just saved out of Photoshop. We're going to drag this into Rico Theta, enlarge it. Okay, here's the photo we just edited in Photoshop. And the first thing you might notice is that now our horizon line is very straight and not skewed up into the top left and right corners like it was after it was exported straight out of ICE. The 360 degree aspect ratio appears to be correct and the horizon line looks far more natural. The ground looks all intact with no stitching or skewing. And more importantly, if we look at the sky, you'll notice the grey area where the sky used to pinch. Now again, as I indicated earlier, it's not perfect. In this case, it's very difficult to patch in a cloudy sky, so the best we can do is a gradient. And in most cases where you've got a blue sky entirely, you can get rid of any anomalies up in the sky. You may recall I mentioned a second option to optimize the sky of your 360 degree photos. This is my preferred option and it involves the superimposing of your logo into the 360 degree image as you can see here. So I've taken a circular logo that I've created for myself and I've superimposed it over the sky or the pinched part of the sky that was created by ICE. 
This option, in my opinion, is more aesthetically pleasing. It's still not perfect by any means, but it also gives you the added benefit of marking your 360 photos with a signature. You could add a website URL or a blog URL. The options are virtually endless with a logo such as this. Okay, let's get back to Photoshop and let's get stuck into superimposing your logo over the top of your 360 degree image. We can continue on from where we left off just before we added the grey sky. Firstly, we're going to remove the grey sky that we created just a moment ago. Now I've got my circular logo here on a separate tab in Photoshop. Now you'll need to create your own circular logo. In this case, the resolution of this file is about 4000 by 4000 pixels, which is enough resolution to make it look sharp on the 360 degree image. The only optimizations we need to do here to make it ready for the 360 degree photo is converting the image to a polar orientation. In this case, all I need to do is go to Filter Menu, Distort, and Polar Coordinates. We want to ensure that Polar to Rectangular is selected, and click OK. We're then going to select the whole image, Control A, and Copy, Control C, and we're going to move over to our original 360 photo and paste it, Control V. We now have a logo floating on a additional layer. All we want to do here is go Control T to transform the layer. We'll grab the handle on the right and we're going to drag that to the right of the 360 until it snaps. We'll then grab the left part of the layer and drag that to the left of the 360 until it snaps. The height can be adjusted to any size. The height is really the indicator of how big or small you want your logo to appear on the sky. We're then going to drag the whole layer up to the top until it snaps, and we'll just stretch it back down to the edge of the sky. I'm happy with it about there, so we'll hit enter. And that's it, our logo is in place and we can save the image. Now, when you open your photo in Rico Theta, you should be able to see your logo if you look up directly at the sky. You can also apply this logo to the bottom of your image to cover up a tripod if you so choose. Now there is also a third way to edit the sky of your 360 image. I've left this method to last because it requires a very powerful PC and a lot of system resources to be able to pull this off, and particularly with these 143 megapixel 360 degree images produced by ICE. For the purposes of this video, I've reduced the resolution of my 360 degree image down to about 30% of its original size. If you experience errors claiming that Photoshop has run out of RAM, I'd suggest you do the same thing and reduce the resolution of your 360 image. This will stabilize Photoshop and allow you to edit the photo. Let's get started. You'll see that I've got the original image that I exported out of ICE up on screen. Now you'll also notice that I've extended the sky all the way to the top. The reason for this is because we're going to be editing the polar regions of this 360 photo. Once you've extended the sky to the top of the canvas, we then want to open the 360 photo in a spherical view within Photoshop. To do this, we want to select the background layer. We then go up to the 3D menu, go down to spherical panorama, and we want to select new panorama layer from selected layers. Now that you've opened the image in spherical view within Photoshop, you'll be able to navigate around like you would a typical 360 degree viewer. If you scroll up to the top, you'll see the pinching that we want to remove. To give you a better understanding of how this view works, down in the bottom right corner you'll see a series of new layers. You'll notice down the very bottom you have a spherical map. This is the original image we've just come from. This is the texture that is projected onto the 3D spherical geometry that has now become the top layer, which is named background. So if you double click on this, much like a smart layer, it will open up the spherical map. Now in this, we can treat it exactly like you would a normal Photoshop file. You can create layers, you can edit non-destructively with those layers, you can add adjustment layers. Let's say for example, we want to add some non-destructive adjustments to our 360 image. We're going to add a new layer, so it doesn't edit the background layer. We'll grab our brush tool and we'll just draw something on the screen. Now, if we want to return back to our 360 degree spherical view, we just click on the X up here on this adjustment layer or spherical map. And we want to ensure we save this layer. This will take us back to our 360 degree spherical image. And as you can see, our adjustment is now visible on the 360 degree spherical map. 
If we'd like to adjust this even further, we can go back to our spherical map, double click, and you can remove this layer, or adjust it how you see fit. We'll then go back. Once again, you want to save every time you come out of the spherical map. And that's how you apply non-destructive adjustments to your 360 degree image. Now let's attempt to make some adjustments to our pointy sky here. There are numerous ways in how to tackle this. I'm going to show you just a couple, but what works for me may not necessarily work for you. So do what works best in your situation. I'm going to start by zooming out so we can create a lasso around the area of the sky that we wish to adjust. So to zoom out, you just need to be on the properties tab and I tend to select the vertical setting. If you prefer, you can also choose to zoom via lens focal length in millimeters. We're going to adjust the FOV and just bring it out a little so we can see most of the area around the pinch at the top of the sky. I'm going to grab the lasso tool and we're going to circle around where the sky starts to pinch and stretch. You don't need to be perfect here, so just a quick circle will do. We'll then right click, fill. Ensure that Content Aware is selected because we want Photoshop to attempt to create a patch on the sky. And it won't be perfect by any means, but it will be a good starting point. As you can see, Photoshop has done an okay job. We won't say it's perfect. But we're off to a good start, and from here we can use the clone tool to tidy this up. Now that we've applied a content aware adjustment to the top of the sky, let's go take a look at the spherical map, the texture that gets wrapped around the 3D geometry. We'll go down to the spherical map, double click on that. Notice something different about the north pole of this image now? It looks a little bit more like a normal 360 degree photo taken straight off a camera. And this is because we've adjusted the pixels within the 3D view itself. Hence the spherical map is reflecting what we want to see in the final 360 view. This is a much better way to edit because we get to see the final image as we're editing and the spherical map adjusts accordingly. We want to make the adjustments to this 360 layer non-destructive. So we'll open a new layer and then we'll go back by closing the spherical map, saving that. I should also take this opportunity to note that you can apply multiple layers under the spherical map. Only the layer that you select before you click save is the layer that you will be editing on in the 360 degree view. Now we can edit non-destructively on that top layer that we've just applied on the spherical map. All I want to do is clone out the imperfections in the sky. So we're going to select the clone tool. Hold down the alt key to put your clone tool into source select mode and select the part of the sky that you'd like to clone. Start cloning away the imperfections that you don't like and just gradually work your way out until it looks reasonably tidy. Don't get too hung up on the small details because ultimately you're not going to make out the small imperfections from the 360 degree view. Most 360 degree viewers cannot actually zoom in far enough to even notice the smaller imperfections. So it's really not required to go to absolute perfectionist lengths to tidy this up. In this case, I'm going to keep these adjustments fairly simple for the purposes of the video. I'm fairly happy with that, so we're going to go ahead and save that and see what it looks like in Rico Theta. Now one thing to note before we switch over to Theta is if you go back to the spherical map, you'll see if you click on layer 1, your clone adjustments are only locked to that layer. So turning it off and on again, you can see the benefits of non-destructive editing in the 360 degree view. Moving over to Rico Theta. Let's open the image we just saved after editing in the spherical view. So if you scroll to the top, you'll notice the sky looks a little nicer in this image. It's certainly far from perfect, but with a little time and adjustment, the 360 spherical method can make your sky look as if there is no pinching there at all in the first place. And that's the third method for adjusting your sky. The fourth part of this video series is optional, but can be beneficial. I go in depth on how I use Nick tools to post-process my 360 degree photo further to really make it pop and stand out. That's the end of my video series, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this and got something useful out of it. If you did, or you just enjoyed this, I'd appreciate it if you smash the like button and subscribe for further content. Thanks very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time.